price that they're originally offering versus what they're offering now, that shows some motivation. Because if I'm sitting there and I don't really care when I sell my property, so I'm not motivated at all, why would I reduce my purchase price? Basically, this is what I'll sell my property for, and if I don't get it, screw it, I'm living here. The other side, though, which starts to start seeing the price come down, you know people are, the homeowners are motivated to get rid of it because why else would you get rid of the price? Watch the wording. A lot of real estate agents will start to put in wording within those listings to try to hint towards the seller being a motivated individual. And from a seller's or homeowner's perspective, when you have your property on the market, especially say in Toronto, it's been on there for 20, 25, 30 days. When your average days on market are up to 15 or 18, you know what they are, Peter? In Toronto, what the average days on market are? Less than a month. Hmm? Less than a month. Less than a month. So you start looking at that. Once you start getting over that average, people start then becoming worried. Like, am, I, am I too high? What's wrong with my property? Am I actually going to sell it? There's certain things that are sticking in as homeowners. You're very confident as soon as you list that property. But as time goes on, that confidence level starts going down and down. And you become a lot more motivated as a seller. So there could be issues. There's always issues with properties when this happens. Because if there wasn't, there'd be many more. So it's either outdated. I walked into a property where it was done to the nines on the main level. And then you go upstairs and they got the old uh, trim all around the doors. It's not the white. Um, it's just... They got the old brown shaggy carpet sort of thing. They did everything on the main level, but upstairs wasn't done up. Or it might be too often through the whole house. Slightly run down. Some people don't have the money to go ahead and say fix the roof or you know upgrade the furnace because it still kind of works. And that inconsistency is like I was talking about. You have some nice areas within the property and other areas that just don't match up. It doesn't matter if you have marble countertops if you would go up upstairs and see the old shaky carpet. If something's gonna turn off a homeowner, and you've got to remember, everybody else is looking at these properties from a purely emotional standpoint. They don't want to go in and do anything to these properties. So when they see things that are being outdated or run down, then they look at that and they say, all oh, this is is work to me. When you see it through a different perspective, you know, who cares if I do a mortgage plus improvements, I can get all this work done, add it into the mortgage. Yes, I'll pay an extra month rent for mortgage where I'm staying now, but I can buy this property. Who cares if I take a month before I can actually move in, but I can get all this work done. And trust me, $30,000 goes a long ways when it comes to renovations. You can think of how much you can update the flooring, you know, just trim around, add a bathroom. $30,000 goes a long ways if you're somewhat frugal and pay attention to where the money's going. You don't get the marble cut cut for something nice. So, and remember the gems, the eight gems that I was talking about. Look at those things as you go through these properties. So, let's take a look at the numbers of how we can find that twenty dollars to $50,000 equity. So we're looking for comparable fix, uh, comparables after the property's fixed up, so after you buy it, just work with it. The property we're looking at today is worth 420 to 430. The alleged, original listing at 410. So we said $30,000 for renovations, right? Well that puts that 440 technically fair market value, right? 410, and we said $30,000 worth of renovations, like we were talking about earlier. Then they reduce the price down to 400, which 400 plus a 30k. It's right in, on the high end of what it's about actually be worth your paying. A little bit higher than fair market value. No, sorry, 20. My bad. So, at this point in time, you're paying on the low end of the 20. So, in our opinion, you should be able to buy this property between $370,000 and $380,000. So if you look at that reduction in purchase price, it's only 5%, maybe 7.5% reduction off of the $400,000 if you buy it in this range. And people, you can, a lot of people will block me on this and say that I don't know the Toronto market, I don't know enough about these sorts of things, and I would tell them that they have not done enough research because we have invested all over Ontario, and I'm telling you, opportunities like this come available all the time. It's a matter of not being able or not knowing what to do or how to do, how to manipulate the property to bring it to And once again, that $20,000 for $30,000, it goes a very long way when it comes to updating. I'm going to take a look at this example. Say, it's a free, say you buy it for free. $20,000 worth of renovation costs, $400,000 in total cost. After repair value, we're looking at that 420 to 430 range. So right there, you make twenty dollars to $30,000 in equity. Why wouldn't somebody do this? Right? Commission. Hmm? Commission? 
you don't pay commission when you buy. After Absolutely. And then we'd be getting into a heck of a lot more things like mortgage pay down, appreciation in the market, so on and so forth. All I'm looking at is how much money did you put into the property, bought it, renovated it, it's worth, versus what the actual after repair value is. So why would everybody do this? Why would everybody just go ahead and, such, such from an investor's perspective, try flipping it or whatever the case may be? There's not enough money for it. Because when you pay 5% real estate commissions on the 